Are you thinking about booking that all-inclusive resort for next year and are looking for some tips to avoid some of the pitfalls? Stay tuned as we interview Melissa Feenstra of Feenstra Travel about her 10 tips for all-inclusive resorts. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. My guest today is Melissa Feenstra, owner-operator of Feenstra Travel located in Jensen, Michigan. A certified travel associate and destination specialist, Melissa has been planning vacations for her satisfied clients across the country since 1994. Hi, Melissa. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Hey, Ken. How are you? Thanks for having me. It's so good to see you again. Uh, it's great to have you back with us, Melissa. Melissa, Deb and I are, are considering next winter for an all-inclusive getaway. And I must conf confess, I'm no expert when it comes to resorts and all-inclusives, having only really experienced one or two in all the time we've been traveling. When I mentioned this to you, you were kind enough to send me your tips for choosing an, a resort and avoiding rookie mistakes. So I was hoping today we could go over a few of those with our viewers and listeners. How does, how does that sound? That sounds great, Ken. I would love to. Um, I'm quite passionate about the all-inclusive concept, so I'm really excited that you've given me this opportunity. And um, yeah, it's yeah, I'm passionate about it. It's a good value. First all right. Of all. So thanks. wonderful, wonderful. So let's get started. So the first thing that was on your list, Melissa, was you get what you pay for. Now, what did you mean by that? You know, um, you can pull up uh, looking at all-inclusive resorts, just using Mexico, for example. Okay. If you plug that into your browser and you start looking at prices on Expedia or Travelocity or whatever it may be, you're going to see prices all over the board. Right. And, you know, the question is, well, gee, why is this one $2,500 a person for a week? And why is this one $1,500? The easiest, best place to start with that question and how you would answer that is it's kind of like a staff to guest ratio. Okay. What does it cost to an employee? You know, they have to pay those employees to be there and they also right. have to buy goods, but going with the employees first, the lesser expensive all-inclusives are going to have less staff to care for you, whether that be a bartender, whether that be how many beach towels that you can use during the day, because do they have enough people to work in the laundry facilities? What right. kind of food is going to be prepared? You kind of have to look at it from behind the scenes a little bit. And that's a big difference. So when you see that higher price point, that means that they're paying the staff better and they're going to have a better staff to guest ratio. That's really interesting. So it's a lot like a crew ratio, mm -hmm. crew to passenger ratio on a oh, cruise ship. Very much so. It is the exact same concept. So that's number one. Number two, it would be again, you know, 1500 to 2500. If you enjoy cocktails during the day or beer or wine, mm -hmm. for example, that $1,500 all inclusive per person, you're going to have well spirits, whatever that may be. That is going to be your lower brand vodkas, tequilas. Okay. I think scotch is a really popular thing with gentlemen nowadays. If you're paying for a $1,500 all-inclusive, you're not going to see your known scotch names there. Right so on. that's not going to be there. If you're a beer drinker, there may be one choice of beer. And again, using Mexico as the example, it's probably going to be Dos Equis or Corona. It's one type of beer. If you like American beers or Canadian beers, they're not going to be there. It's going to be one type of beer. When you see that higher priced all-inclusive, look for things like premium brand liquors, yeah. beers, and wines. So really at the end of the day, things that are important to you, things that you might mm -hmm. normally expect, you got to make sure that it's Ex there. And exactly. You get, exactly. You get what you pay for. Yeah, you get what you pay for. I right mean, on. what's the point of going on vacation at three thousand dollars if it's a mediocre experience? Exactly. Think about the things that are important to you, what you like to eat, what you like to drink, and think about what it costs to employ employees. Super. So the next thing you sent me, which kind of rings true from my cruising days too, is check out the room location. Because not two no two rooms at a resort are are created equal, I'm sure. How does that work? Generally, when people are calling to book an all-inclusive vacation, they're looking at at least seven nights. 
Okay. So you have to think of this hotel room as your home away from home for seven nights. That's a right. long time. Right. It's not, you know, the Holiday Inn that you're staying two days at to go to a concert and visit a city. This is your home away from home for seven full nights. I'm here in the Midwest, Michigan. Yes, we have the Great Lakes, but we don't have the oceans yeah. and we don't have palm trees. We need warm weather. <laughs> so you're drawn to wanting to be outside when you leave the Midwest, you know, in February or March. So if that balcony that's attached to your room, if you, you buy the least expensive room category, that is likely overlooking the back of the building. So what are you seeing off that balcony? You're seeing laundry being moved. You're seeing food being moved. You're seeing and hearing the staff coming in and out of the resort on buses during the day. So I really encourage you to stay away from that lead in room category. Oftentimes they're called deluxe or tropical view. When you see tropical view or, and they make it sound really pretty. Tropical you know, deluxe, does sound. junior yeah. suite, all inclusive room with balcony. That's probably not what you want. I'm not saying that you have to book an ocean view, but if you just upgrade yourself by like one or two room categories, away from deluxe, tropical view, run of the house is another term that's used for that entry level, looking over the parking lot view. Look for words like partial ocean view, poolside. That's at least when you walk out on that balcony, at least you're going to be overlooking the gardens and the pool, for example. So maybe you're overlooking the pool, but just beyond that is a you know nice row of palm trees and then you can see and hear the ocean. And oftentimes, the difference is not that much, maybe $70, $150. And when you spread that out again over that seven nights, it's like 10 to $15 more additional per day. Oh my goodness. 10 to $15 a day looks pretty inexpensive when you're, when you're faced with, with a parking lot view as opposed to a pool something view. nicer. Exactly. I would have to think that room location again because I'm an avid cruise I keep going keep I keep comparing but room location when it comes to resorts is probably much more important than cruise ships because on cruise ships well you don't you probably don't spend that much time in your room you're going to spend more probably spend more time in a resort room. Am I, am I right about that, Melissa? I think so. Your room on a cruise ship averages about 184 square feet. So yep. it's not something that draws you in and calls you to say, I want to spend a whole lot of time here. Let's right. order room service for breakfast. And all-inclusive kind of does. I mean, most average rooms are 470 square feet, you know, right. with a nice additional balcony. You do spend a little bit more time in your room right if on. you're wired in that way and that type of person that's looking to disconnect and really relax so, so you yeah, really you spend you, more time in your room yeah, you want to pay pay attention to your room location for sure very important i guess one other thing i would say about that is sometimes i have clients say well i'll just take that run of the house least expensive room and i'll negotiate or <laughs> hope for an upgrade once i get there guess what folks they don't upgrade the run of the house or the tropical viewed rooms they're going to take that person that paid for that po partial ocean view and they're going to upgrade them first. Right. They know the front desk, they can see the type of room that you book. They yeah. know what you paid for. They're not going to take that run of the house room and upgrade you. You are already on a super saver rate or a discounted rate. You will not be upgraded when you get there. So if you, if you take the lost leader room, then you should really expect to be in the lost leader. Absolutely. When absolutely. When they're looking at that client that, yeah. okay, they booked a partial ocean view. Yeah. They're going to, they already know that you're willing to spend a little bit more yeah. likely tip. You're probably going to buy some excursions, spend some money in their spa. They're looking to make sure that you have a really good time. Even the front desk people are kind of salespeople. They, they will upgrade the high rollers before they upgrade yes. anybody else. Yes. Makes sense yes. when you think about it. It's true. So the next thing on our list is you, you said to be realistic about the entertainment. Now, what, what does that mean? Be realistic about the entertainment. All of these all-inclusive resorts, they hire an entertainment staff. 
maybe two or three times a week, they're bringing in an outfit from the outside on the level of maybe cruise ship entertainment. So be realistic about the entertainment. This is not Las Vegas. This is not a live concert. It gives you something to do in the evening. It's engaging. It's almost kind of comical at times. If you can look at it as oh my goodness, you know, I, there's so-and-so that I met, you know, there's Jose that I met at the pool today. Right. And now look at him. He's being an Elvis impersonator and, you know, <laughs> what a scream. Yeah. Don't look at it so much as, okay, I'm going to be really wowed by this show. Look at it as, you know, these kids are working hard. These are young people and look at all the effort that they're putting in. You'll enjoy it a lot more. That's the show in the evening. Right. Usually around supper time, so from like 7 to 8.30, generally in the all-inclusive hotel lobbies, you will find like a gentleman playing piano. Sometimes they'll bring a singer along. That's generally where I find the best entertainment is kind of that hour and a half before dinner slash cocktail hour. Just before we leave this, circling back to the regular entertainment, would it be, would it be a fair comment to say that to be realistic about the entertainment, it'd be more like dinner theater quality. That's a that's a really yeah, Ken. I would say so. That's a great Analogy. comparison. Yeah, so kind of along that quality. But if you make it fun, then it's funny and you're entertained. <laughs> great, great. Now you've also told me when I go there if that I so much enjoy is the spa and getting a massage. You're, you're recommending that, you know, you should check out the spa before you buy. What did you mean by that? I do. Oftentimes, once you arrive on property, many of the all-inclusive resorts use a coupon system. They call it an added value. And I think sometimes people get a little bit misconstrued with this too, when you're buying on Travelocity or whatever it may be. Oh, I'm going to get $200 in resort credits. So I'm going to get that massage and I'm going to take that $200 credit and I'm going to get a free massage. Right. Sorry, folks, it doesn't work that way. It's a $200 resort credit and it's broke out in different areas. Okay. So maybe you have in that $200 resort credit. So you get like $25 towards a bottle of wine, $50 towards the spa, $50 towards a room upgrade. You want to wait until you receive that coupon when you check in. Check out the spa, check out their hours. Anybody can walk into the spa. Oftentimes there's workout facilities or hot springs and things like that that you can use complimentary. Make sure that you like the smell because all of those spas are burning incense or candles or something like that. That can really make or break a good or a bad experience if those scents are too strong. Right. That's why I say check out the spa before you go. Make sure that it feels good smells good before you buy now before you put before you yeah. put the money down yeah now of course if you're there for a week and you're leaving on saturday you don't want to wait to book your spa on thursday for that friday treatment because they right. could be full so if that's something that's on your radar if that's important to you if you think i'm gonna be gone for a week i'm gonna go to the spa and get a massage D don't wait till the end of the week you know, do it in your first or second day that you pay the spa visit. And oftentimes, generally, when you walk in the front door, um, there's someone that can make that appointment for you right there at the spa front desk. That leads to another tip when you first arrive is to take some time and explore the resort. So you get the lay of the, lay of the land. Absolutely. And check out the spa and do it early. Mm -hmm. Much like when you're aboard a cruise ship, you spend the first couple of hours just exploring the ship. So you yep. know where everything so you, is. Yeah, exactly. So you know where you're going. So yeah. what about dress codes? You you mentioned you mentioned dress codes. No, your it says no, know your dress codes. You know, generally during the day, it is very, very casual. Most people are putting on their bathing suit. So you get showered in the morning, you're packing your beach bag or pool bag, you're wearing a bathing suit and a cover-up to breakfast. Right. And if you're staying at the resort all day and not leaving. That's the dress code for the day. Right. Is bathing suits, cover ups, hats, flip flops. Gentlemen, you're basically wearing your swim trunks to breakfast with right. a t shirt and your ball hat and a flip flop. So when you're thinking about packing, you know, don't think about, oh, I need seven pairs of shorts because I'm going to wear shorts, you know, during the day. 
probably not. You probably need seven bathing suits <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you're going to spend the majority of your time in. Right. And nobody's going to want to wear the same two bathing suits for seven days when you're in that bathing suit for <laughs> five and six hours. So that's during the day. Very, right. very casual. In the evening, they do kind of step things up. They kind of transform that resort into nighttime restaurants and music venues and things of that nature. The buffets are always generally casual. Right. So if you've had too much sun and you're like, you know, no, I'm just going to hit the buffet, then shorts are fine. But if you're looking to get into those specialty restaurants where you're going to get a nice steak or an Asian fusion restaurant or something like that, guess what, gentlemen, I'm sorry, you got to put on a pair of slacks. That's all there is to it. They're not going to let you in in your Bermuda shorts and T-shirt. Okay. And I don't mean slacks. It doesn't have to be dress slacks. Women, we have it easy, finally, for once. But it's the <laughs> guys that <laughs> it's it's the guys that have it difficult, you know, because they're like, oh, you know, I don't want to put on a pair of pants. But it doesn't even have to be slacks and a belt. It can be slacks, belt, collared shirt. So right. that could be like something that you have on now, Ken. Yeah. It can be short sleeve, but it needs to have a collar on it. Right. That's how you're going to get into those specialty restaurants in the evening. Closed toed shoes is another just kind of weird thing. Some all inclusives are really, really strict that they want gentlemen in closed toed shoes. They've kind of backed off of it in the last five years because you can wear a really cool man shirt with a pair of blue jeans and a Birkenstock sandal that looks, you know, pretty nice. But just be prepared that, ooh, I might need that closed-toed shoe. Right on. And as far as ladies, I mean, again, finally, we have it once. It's sandals, dresses, sleeveless, tube tops. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are, just as there, long there, as there. it's not cut-off shorts and yeah. a sleeveless top. I mean, I swear I've seen women wear their nightgowns to dinner. You know, <laughs> But if you put a kitten heel on it and a piece of jewelry, apparently that's a dress. So. <laughs> so, they're, so they're much harder on the guys. And, they are much and, harder and the, on the guys. They the ladies get a free really ride. Hard. I always often get this question. Hmm. People will say, oh, I was going through the pictures and everyone looks like models. You know, I don't know yes, if this is the right all-inclusive for me. Yeah. Everyone looks so beautiful. Don't think that you're going to be a fish out of water because you don't look like the person in the picture. That right. resort that's, still is for you. That's really good to know because I, I have to say I'm, I'm not one of the beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not either. But, you know, do, do I look like every other Midwestern middle-aged yeah. mom? I sure do. And yeah. guess what? That's the majority of the all-inclusive resort. People that look just like you and me, Ken. Awesome. Awesome. So you tell me that timing is everything and varies by the resort. What do you mean by that, Melissa? A couple of things. Everybody wants to travel when their children are on school breaks. Right. You're looking to give your children experiences and things of that nature. You want to do it when your kids are off from school. But the minute you tack on a holiday, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas is the worst. Why in the world the week of Christmas is it costing $3,200 a person for an all-inclusive? And then I look at the first week of January and it's $1,000 less. That's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah. Supply and demand. So that's what I mean by timing is everything. You stick a holiday on there, expect to pay about a third more than what you would pay if it were a non-holiday week. Right. So if you want to economize, look at the times of the year when there's no holidays involved. You'll get Absolutely. it. You'll get a better. You get a better price. You do. You yeah. do. So, Melissa, would that also apply? Like, we're obviously talking there about family resorts and, and the like. But would that also, would that timing also apply more or less to the adult resorts for just couples same. and same, same idea? Problem. So, what about this when it comes to timing and certain resorts? Does seasonality play a part? in it as well oh, like yeah, yeah absolutely oftentimes the warmer here um the rainier season there in the caribbean or mexico okay. those are going to be less expensive okay times to travel now 
We talked earlier about dining, specialty dining reservations, dinner reservations. When you check in, as soon as you check in, is, is that, that something that gets sold out and you want to yeah, plan it's interesting. that in advance? You're going to run into that situation of needing a dinner reservation and having to sign up for them at the beginning of the week at those lower cost all-inclusives. Right. that entry level price point when you get into the more deluxe luxury resorts that you're paying more for right they have more specialty restaurants higher number of staff and they use like the applebee's system like a beeper okay uh, you don't even have to have a dinner reservation the lesser expensive ones yes to get into a specialty restaurant expect to make a dinner reservation and you have to do it at the beginning of the week. Sometimes you have to do it on the day of, and you may be spending a lot of time in buffets unless you're willing to commit to a time of what time you're going to be to dinner and which restaurant you're eating at each night. That's your lesser expensive all-inclusive. You're making okay. dinner reservations, period. Okay. Your higher end ones that you paid a little bit more for, you can walk up to any restaurant if you want to eat at the Japanese steakhouse five nights, you can go there every night. Every night, There right. is no limit. Nobody cares. You don't need a dinner reservation, and they're going to give you the first come, first serve, you know, like I said, like an Applebee's-styled beeper. And when your table's ready, it's going to go off, and you're going to walk into the restaurant, and you're going to eat. Now, you also tell me that I need to venture off the resort at least once during my seven day stay yep. why is that because maybe it doesn't look like home but we don't travel to have things look like home we're looking for new experiences we want things to look different right experience the culture if you can emerge yourself into the culture at least once or twice i i just don't think that you'll ever regret it where all of the resorts lie whether you're in the caribbean or mexico there are shops there's restaurants, there's catamarans, there's a guy that's just dying to take you fishing. Start up a conversation <laughs> with him. Get get off the resort. You're safe. I know it looks and feels different than home. And what? So basically what you're saying is, A, use common sense. B, go out and experience the people, experience the culture, because it's going to give you memories. It's going to give you memories. To take home with. The other thing that you're telling me, Melissa, is and I'm good at this, is to lean into re the relaxation and pampering when you're there. What What do you mean by that? Well, the pampering, I guess, part of it first and the relaxation. You are truly an all-inclusive resorts guest. Right. They know that this is your home away from home for seven days. Let them bring you a towel. If someone comes up to you and says, you know, can I get you an umbrella? They're not expecting anything for that. That's part of their job. And I know that that seems strange. Well, I see that umbrella over there. I can get it myself and pull it over to my husband and I's lawn chair. They don't want you doing that. They want to take care of you. So go ahead and let them get that umbrella for you. Let them get you a dry towel and just say thank you. That's the pampering side of things. Is it really okay to order two entrees? I mean, do I really need that probably <laughs> not but again you paid for a different experience you want to have things different than they are at home it's right. okay to kind of indulge and everyone that works at the resort is well aware of that and as far as the relaxation it takes a while to kind of relax and you're sitting in that lawn chair and you're tapping your foot and you're like i ordered that drink i can sit when is it coming? When is it coming? Everybody's kind of on a little bit more slower, relaxed time frame. That young lady or that gentleman, they have not forgotten you. They are coming back around. It just takes them a little bit longer. When that gal or that gentleman does show up with your cocktail that you ordered, make sure you give him or her a dollar. It doesn't have to be a lot and you don't have to do it every time. That's going to mean the world to that person that did bring you that cocktail, they're probably going to hustle a little bit faster next time. But relax, it's coming. And remember, if you know you have all day, you don't have to check in for your job. You don't have to pick a kid up and take him to baseball. It'll be okay. Just That's relax. <laughs> really good advice. Just lean into it. It's okay. We're, you got all week. In our lives today, we're so busy and everything's go, 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 yes. go. You go down to one of these resorts. It's for want of a better word. The one time we were in Jamaica, somebody called it, you're on Jamaica time. Island time. 
island time and yeah. the world doesn't move as fast and, guys. and neither and and neither and neither should you and neither should you mm -hmm. and when you take the time to adapt to that you'll find that that's extremely relaxing mm -hmm. if you yeah, try to fight it then it's going to be a rough week it's going to be a rough week <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's what i would say about that that's wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful, Melissa. You've given us a, a lot of great tips here and just an absolute ton of great information. But perhaps one of the most important tips that I can think of is if you're serious about getting a great resort vacation is to take full advantage of the expert knowledge of a travel advisor uh, such as yourself. Speak to that a little bit for us, Melissa. Why is that important to have the services of a travel advisor, even just for, you know, I'm going to book an all-inclusive? Mm -hmm. What makes the difference? There are a lot of agents out there like myself that specialize in the all-inclusive. I spend, as an agent, a lot of time on property. I do trips that are put on by my industry. If you're speaking to an agent that specializes in all-inclusive travel, my guess is he or she have seen most any property that you're going to bring up to them. And that's not something you're going to find online. The internet is a great source, but somebody that has walked it, seen it, stayed at it, tasted the food, put their feet in that beach sand. Guess what? Google hasn't done that, but I have. A good travel advisor, your money is important to me. I want to, I want to meet your expectations and exceed them. I want you to spend that $2,500 per person in the best possible way for the best resort that fits you. And the only way to do that is through a conversation. Let your travel advisor get to know you and get to know your travel advisor. It's and, going to save you a lot of time. Well, Melissa, that's great information. Do you have any other advice for guests looking to book for 2022 or 2023? So book early. That's going to give you your best deal. If you're nervous about what requirements may be like, what's the world going to look like in 12 months? Guess what? All of those online tour operators they're asking that you pay for that trip in full upfront. When you work with a travel agent, we fall under a different umbrella. You pay a minimal deposit and oftentimes you're not paying for that trip in full until 45 days before you actually leave. You can book the trip for 12 months from now, get the better deal and your price is locked in. So it's not going to change on you and you haven't made that full monetary commitment. The last thing I would say yeah. is make sure you're buying travel insurance you got to have a plan B, have a backup. Please buy yeah. travel insurance. Excellent advice. Now, I know as an all-inclusive expert, uh, and you've told us that you visit resorts as part of expanding your knowledge on an ongoing basis. Where are you off to next? We will be in Puerto Vallarta at Christmas time. Okay. So, and then I hope to be finally back to Europe in April of 2023. I love Europe and I'm kind of an expert there too. So Wonderful. let's talk Wonderful. about that at some point. That sounds like a, <laughs> if, that sounds like a plan to yeah. me. If you have me back, Ken. <laughs> well, we could not have you back. I'm going to need to hear about Christmas in Puerto, Puerto Vallarta. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Melissa, if folks want to reach out to you to get more information about an all-inclusive vacation or another type of getaway, how do they do that? Best way is email or the telephone. So my email address is scrolling along the bottom. It's melissa at fiendstratravel.com. I also have my website, fiendstratravel.com. It's all about relationships, having conversations. You can get so much more accomplished by just picking up the phone. Conversation matters. Get to know the person you're doing business with. Pick up the phone, call them. They're dying to talk to you. Well, Melissa, this has been absolutely great. Great advice for Deb and I as we're looking forward to planning something in the Caribbean next year. I look forward to hearing more about your upcoming adventures. So until next time, I'm simply going to wish you sunny skies and cool trop tropical breezes on all your future fans and getaways. And I hope to see you poolside at your favorite oh. resort sometime soon. Sounds great, Ken. You bet. Take All care. Right. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, 
Melissa Feenstra of Feenstra Travel. If you'd like to reach Melissa, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.